And then Sean, um, can you just introduce yourself as a member of the team? Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Uh, my name is Sean Middleton. I work over at the Behavioral Health uh, Home Team, and I've only been here for uh, a, a few months now. So glad to be here. Miigwech. Miigwech. Thank you. Um, uh, where am I at? Uh, Dr. Mason, would you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, my name is Gail Mason. I am the Director of Behavioral Health at NAC and uh, work on the team with uh, Dr. Ravi and Michelle and Renee and, and uh, Aaron and, and Sean. So uh, welcome. And, and Renee, I'm sorry, that I'm going out of order. Renee, could you please introduce yourself, please? Bujo uh, Ginoa. Hello, everyone. Uh, Renee Bolio Banks in uh, Tijinakaz. Um, my English name is Renee Bolio Banks. I'm an elder in residence at the Native American Community Clinic for about mm, a little over two years. So I, I love it. And um, I want to welcome all of you here. Miigwech. <clears throat> Sorry, I, there was a lot of activity. We're having some technical difficulties in here. <laughs> um, we're good now. Hi, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Michelle Corcoran. I'm the nurse. Um, supervisor, manager uh, for the MAT program here at NAC. And Tina? My name is Tina. I'm the HIV case manager here at Native American Community Clinic. Which, thank you. And I'm Kari Rabi. I'm a physician in family practice and addiction medicine here at NAC. Um, thank you all for joining us. Uh, could we start the slides, please? Thank you. Okay. So um, this is the Midwest Tribal Echo, um, welcome. Next slide. And so today we had our prayer uh, with uh, a blessing from Sean Middleton. Thank you so much for joining us. It's nice to have, have you here today. I'm going through the introductions and agenda. I'll be going through Zoom guidelines. Uh, Tina will be doing our announcements. Uh, we have our own elder in residence here today, Renee Bolio Banks doing, um, doing our didactic today. Uh, no case presentation is planned, and then we will close. Um, so, of course, we all are well familiar with Zoom at this point, but uh, please let us know who you are. If you, you can um, right click on your, your little square and update your name and um, a title organization. Um, and uh, you, you can also introduce yourself in the chat, please. Next slide. Uh, we really enjoy seeing all of your faces. So if you're able to, if you have a camera, please turn your camera on so that we can see you. It's always easy, much easier for the person presenting if they can see faces looking back at them. Um, and it just makes us make it feel more like a conversation. We do ask that you mute your microphone when you're not speaking. If uh, we do get a residual noise from you, your, your microphone, we might turn it off for you. Please don't be offended. You can use the chat or hand raise function if you'd like to ask a question or you'd like attention. And then please be careful not to have any protected health information in our presentation. And then okay. Tina, could you do the announcements? Sure. Um, just a reminder that we meet every first and third Wednesday from noon to 1 p.m. over Zoom. Um, upcoming echo sessions on December 1st, Dr. Stately will be um, giving a talk in honor of uh, World AIDS Day. And then December 15th, China Pfeiffer and Dr. Kelly will be talking about endocarditis outreach. Um, and then um, as this echo is part of an entire series called the Opioid Use Disorder Education and Treatment Echo series that is hosted by Stratus Health. Um, so they have one more echo under this series that is hosted by Dr. Heather Bell and Dr. Kurt Devine. That echo happens on the first and third Tuesdays of each month from 12.15 to 1.15. Um, if you'd like information about that echo, you can reach out to me. There are also other opioid use disorder echoes and pain management echoes that are um, hosted by Hennepin 
uh, Hennepin Health, and all of that information can be found on their website. Um, case presentations are typically held at the end of each echo, and um, they are a time for participants to just um, present a real life clinical case to ask questions and kind of solicit for advice from the audience. Um, if you would like to propose a case presentation, um, please send me an email. There's just a link that I'll send you. Um, it's just a survey that you'll fill out. Um, and that link can also be found on our website. Um, so if you would like to propose a case presentation, uh, yeah, feel free to just fill out that survey. Um, so all participants are eligible for continuing education credits um, or a certificate of completion. Um, so at the end of this uh, presentation, I'll be sending out an email with a survey link in order to get those CMEs or certificates. You'll just have to complete that survey. Um, so those are the announcements. I'm going to stop share and hand it over now to Renee. Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing. If people could actually in the chat just put their first and last names, um, titles, organizations, um, that would be helpful. You can send it to me directly or just to everybody. Um, for my um, attendance tracking. Okay, thanks. Go ahead. Hello. <clears throat> Is my mic off? Uh, uh, hello, everyone. Bushu Ginawa. Hello, all my relatives. Sibikwe Indigenous Indigo, Rene Bolio Bench, Indigenous Jaganashimang, Gazagaswa Jamaica Gandunjiba, Migizi and Dundam. What I said was uh, um, my English name is Rene Bolio Banks, and my uh, spirit name is uh, River Woman. Um, I'm from Leech Lake Nation, and I am um, the Migizi tribe. And I just want to thank Sean for the wonderful prayer. Uh, um, it's really good to start out that way. Um, so miigwech. Um, so I'm going to be presenting on holistic health. Um, and uh, I, I graduated from um, St. Catherine University uh, in 2018 uh, with a master's in holistic health. Um, and it really resonated with me as an American Indian because it, it uh, is similar to our medicine wheel. You know, it, it's a mind, body, spirit, but we have uh, one more dimension or quadrant area, which is um, emotions relations. So I'm just gonna kind of go over what I've learned. And a lot of this might be redundant, um, you know, I'm gonna, um, but we'll, I'll just kind of quickly go through what I have. Um, so, and it's really an honor to be here. So thank you for, for allowing me to do this. Uh, so um, what is holistic health? Um, uh, it, you know, it's a, it's a healing approach and honoring the mind, body, and spirit to promote health. Um, holistic health is also known as integrative complementary alternative health care. Um, so you might have heard of this. Uh, they refer to it as CAM. It's, um, you know, things like acupuncture, chiropractic, Reiki, you know, things like that. It crosses borders, disciplines, time, religions, and ways of healing to benefit individuals, communities, and the environment. So in the United States during the 60s and 70s, it really took, uh, um, took off. Um, uh, there's still a lot that has to be done um, with research and um, other things so, so that we can get insurances on board uh, to have some of this alternative uh, health care uh, um, paid for. And usually the people who need it, um, I don't want to say the most, but can't afford to pay out of pocket for this stuff. You know, it's, it's um, uh, the people that are practicing CAM modalities, you know, they usually have to, they charge um, people to pay out of pocket. 
So at NAG, what I kind of, you know, did was a, an indigenous approach to holistic health. So what is that? You know, as I stated before, you know, the medicine wheel is considered indigenous, um, um, and indigenous people as the circle of life. And the medicine wheel um, is, is considered animate. It's, it's, it has an essence because it's part of who we are. And so there's, there's, there's many representations of the medicine wheel. And you know, a few of them are like the four outer, outer directions, east, south, west, and north, and then the four inner directions, which I am going to be talking about, the mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual. And then um, the four outer seasons, you know, we have summer, fall, winter, spring, and then the inner seasons are stages of development, right? The childhood, uh, young adult, middle age, and old age. So um, stress management. So one of the, one of the uh, key purposes to holistic health and mind, body, medicine, uh, emotional healing is, you know, to combat stress, because as we know, as, as providers that unchecked and unaddressed stress, stressors, uh, you know, can have a detrimental effect on the, the health of our bodies, right? So it's, uh, stress is an emotional response to a trigger. Um, and it's, it can be anything that knocks us out of our homeostatic balance. Um, it could be from you know, anticipation that, that something's gonna happen. It could be caused from ruminating about the past, you know, the present or the future, things that we, we cannot control. Um, you know, it's a, it's a state of mind involving both the brain and the body as their interactions. And it differs, um, uh, differs among individuals and reflects not only major life events, but also the conflicts and pressures of daily life. <clears throat> so uh, this is uh, some of the things that I want to address to get um, uh, to the outcome. So that, you know, the short-term triggers, you know, those altercations with loved ones and those, uh, you know, deadlines and presentations, you know, for work. Um, <laughs> and the long-term triggers, you know, discrimination, inability to work, you know, chronic illness, um, those sorts of things. So in graduate school, I was, um, this book was required reading in one of my classes. And I love this book. And, uh, and there was a story in there that talked about why, why zebras don't get ulcers, you know? And I thought, well, what a crazy book. They're really making me read this in graduate studies, but it's really uh, has a lot of really important information to understanding um, stress and coping. So that, you know, the, the what this, the, the, the premises is, you know, if a zebra is chased by a, a, a lion, immediately the imminent danger, the, the, the fear that he, the amygdala gets triggered and the body starts to produce chemicals and hormones to make this, the, the zebra faster and stronger. So once the zebra gets away from the lion, he, he goes, finds a safe place and he literally shakes his skin and inhales and exhales, you know, like several times, three times, and then he goes back to grazing. And then when I tell my, my relatives when they come in to see me, you know, the, the, um, the NAC relatives, I said, they don't go to every zebra saloon in the jungle and talk about this lion that chased them for the next three months, right? They let it go and they, and they move on. And as humans, we tend to hang on to these things. And once, the, you know, once the past, once, once stress happens and we process it and let it go, um, that could be it, but uh, it's, uh, you know, we tend to uh, bring the, the past with us as we, we ruminate about things and it's, um, it's not good for our health, but there's the acute physical crises, you know, uh, uh, physical injury, starvation, predators, the chronic physical challenges, drought, famine, parasites, which our ancestors had to deal with, right? So currently in our society, we have a lot different, you know, different stressors, you know, the psychological the social disruptions, uh, being late, public speaking, mortgage payments, those kind of things. So what that the response to these stressors is that homeostatic imbalance. So it's, our bodies are so wonderful and how uh, there's an innate mechanism that balances um, stress. Um, the, 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 the body and the spirit, 
um, does this. But when stress becomes too much, it's up to us to help balance that medicine wheel by doing things outside um, of ourselves to um, process and, and, and um, let go of those things. And I'll talk more about that. So I included this slide because I think it kind of gives an overall of that, that um, you know, that uh, allostatic overload. So there's like the environmental stressors, there's the major life events, there's trauma and abuse. And I think when you look at American Indians, uh, our, our relatives, you know, there's, you know, historical trauma and there's, you know, there's a lot, you know, there's, there's discrimination, there's, you know, civil unrest, all of these things that are happening that affect us on a daily basis, right? So this perceived threat, this perceived stress, our bodies, uh, can't recognize if it's a if it's a lion or a bill we can't pay. So we have to be able to tell our parasympathetic sympathetic system we're all right. It's not a it's not a lion. It's just a bill. Let's you know let's let's calm down, right? So the uh, allostatic load is when the burden of the stress becomes too much, and then there's there's physical and psychological problems that emanate from that. Um. So this is kind of, uh, this came out in our research. Um, I did my thesis on healing American Indian historical trauma and we used the indigenous inquiry to do this work, meaning we took our worldview, the American Indian worldview, our reality, our way of being to do this work. And it was so amazing. Um, and you know, it was, it was really a, a life-changing experience for me and for St. Kate's because they've never had anyone do this before. So unresolved grief is, um, it's, it's, a, it's a response. Uh, so if you look at historical trauma response, which is the addictions, you know, the behavior of historical trauma, um, the unresolved grief is uh, not being able to heal that or having that. Um, so this, this slide, um, the graphic kind of gives you an idea of what I'm talking about because I'm having a hard time getting it out there's healing that takes place, right? They come to us and, and they, they, they start getting on the right track. They start feeling good. And then there might be some unjust or prejudicial treatment. You know, there might be a George Floyd or, you know, the, the Christopher Columbus things that were happening and, and it just triggers, you know? So then, so then we're back to the historical trauma response, which is behaviors that are elicited to, uh, you know, that, that are triggered by what's happening. You know, whatever we, whatever those coping skills are that are not good for us, drinking, doing drugs, you know, shopping, you know, whatever those things are. But there's a, the physical resp response to this, if, if left unchecked, is a nutritional strain. It weakens our immunity. So it's, you know, harder for us to heal and, and get through. It's a um, biological impartments to our endocrine, adrenal and, and genes. I mean, this is, you know, some pretty serious stuff. And it's, the social responses are, you know, suicide, uh, substance abuse disorder, violent and abusive relationships, unemployment and poverty, and um, the psychological is the pain and uh, panic and anxiety disorders. I did an interview for a student at, at St. Kate's who's in the holistic health program. And she says, what, what is, you know, what are most of the patients being seen for? And, and it's really anxiety. It's, you know, generalized anxiety disorder. People are, are, are having a hard time, um, you know, coping. And, and depression, you know, so, and, and then along with that, there's PTSD. So if you already have historical trauma and then you're experiencing discrimination, like in the job, that's, that PTSD is gonna occur. And we know what PTSD does is, you know, you can't sleep, you can't, you can't make decisions, you know, your food, you're, you're not digesting your food. The sympathetic system is, is at full blast, preventing us from being in balance. I'm not even going by my notes. I, I did like, it's crazy. Anyway, I included this slide just to kind of give you, this is taken from uh, the Stress and Achievement Motivation. It's uh, uh, um, off online. And I like it because it, it, uh, it, it really, it mimics the medicine wheel and it's probably deliberate. I mean, you know, a lot of things were borrowed from the American Indian people and, and I, um, included it just to kind of give you an idea of the chronic stressors that, um, you know, that we, we 
adapt to, right? Or, you know, and, and it's that repetitive behavior. Why, why am I stuck in this loop? Why is it that these things keep happening? What's going on, you know? So it's, it's um, pathology. So, um, so part of the medicine wheel um, is the physical, right? Activity, the body. Um, in order for man to succeed in life, God provided him with two means, education and physical activity, not separately, one for the soul and the other for the body, but for the two together. With these two means, man can attain perfection. You know, we're meant to move. We're, we're moving beings. We're not meant to set. So the benefits of physical activity, as you all know, and this is nothing new to you, it, you know, it improves our cognitive functioning, relieves depression, uh, cerebral blood flow density. Uh, I'm not going to try and say that word. And then um, it serves our neurotransmitters, you know, so the, the chemicals in our brain. So it's, as you know, um, with so many studies done, the benefits of um, activity. Oh. Um, so I prayed, but I had to pray from my heart. All of my concentration and thoughts went from my head to my heart. All of my senses, hearing, smell, taste, and feeling were connected to my heart. If we started every conversation and every day coming from our heart, our world would be a lot different, you know, but a lot, uh, but, you know, many of um, our relatives are kind of stuck in the ego and, you know, that's why we're having the problems with Mother Earth today. Um, but mindfulness practice um, is, um, uh, let's see. Intentional being present. Okay, so self-regulated attention. That's it's it's in order to to purposely um, bring one's present state into conscious being, conscious awareness, letting go of negative evaluations towards self and others. Um, that's key key elements to mindfulness. Uh, living in the present. Um, you know, uh, when we focus on the breath, when we're meditating, the thoughts will come and go. You know, so, so one thing about meditating too, is that we don't judge, there's no judgment. So when, and that's one of the things that American Indians, a lot of the times they don't come into the clinic, uh, behavioral health or, you know, medical, because they're afraid of being judged. They're afraid, you know, they have that self-awareness and they, they, they don't want, uh, you know, that, that judgment to happen. So one thing about meditation, especially if we incorporate our American Indian, um, ancestors, the land, our, our spirits, and that meditation, it's, it brings us back, it, it kind of activates that DNA, that, that genetic imprint, you know, we, we still have uh, that genetic imprint from our ancestors. So this is kind of getting back to the way we were traditionally. Um, and uh, it's empathic knowledge, you know, there's, there's that ability that we can, we can empathically reach in and, and connect to the spirits. But there's so many benefits. There's so many, uh, lots and lots of research on meditation. And I'm not gonna bore you with all of the details, but you know, McBee, you know, he, he, um, that was, a, he did a lot of uh, research, you know, the, and, and I talked about that as about how med mindfulness practices resonate with American Indians. And, um, hold on a minute. Okay. Um, so let's see. So benefits, um, reduces blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, immune functioning, quality of life enhancement, stress coping abilities, creative and application to learning, attention span and anxiety management skills. I mean, wow, that's, that's really so important. And, and there's studies that um, support this. There's studies that find evidence you know, that th this stuff really happens, that, that just being mindful can change the body. You know, it was Frank Outlaw who said, uh, thought turns to a word, a word turns to, uh, change, changes, turns to action, action leads to behavior, behavior leads to destiny and destiny, um, character and character is your destiny. So it goes from a thought to destiny, right? So if we can, so meditation, can, you know, can do that for us to make us stay in the present and to, to let go of things that um, resonate poorly in our system, 
we're going to change our life. We're storytellers. We can change our stories by changing our thoughts. Um, so emotions, relations, this is a, a part of the medicine wheel as well. Um, active involvement with community and culturally relevant participatory events decreases loneliness, depression, and premature death. This is on Bassett. Um, uh, but that's true. That's, you know, it's uh, COVID's kind of proved that, right? Being isolated and being, you know, kind of in lockdown. Um, but the, you know, spending time in healthy relationships, you know, it, it creates relaxation and, and improves joy and hope and sense of oneness. So spending those times, you know, spending your time with, fr with friends, friends and loved ones you know, having, including your spiritual life, your sexual life, financial life, healthy environment, mental, emotional life, uh, lifestyles that supports the physical health of the body and community and culture. So our relationships with each of these things is really important to look at, you know, like what is your relationship with money? Are, are you, are you in a, a, a a space right now where you're kind of worried you're, you're kind of money's kind of a, an issue and there you know um that by changing that relationship with money and our thoughts around money it is going to change the the energy around that that whole stressor right so there's there's um more that i want to say about that but i don't i'll see if i have some time Uh oh okay there we go um, so the Native American holistic health. So this is something that I, I, um, I'm just going to call it, um, what I'm doing here is, is, is Native American holistic health and it's using the medicine wheel. So it's, it's different than holistic health in that I am reclaiming our traditional ways of, of providing holistic health. Right. So I'm using the medicine wheel, um, uh, I, I developed this worksheet to kind of assess uh, where people are in their medicine wheel. And then we talk about how, we, how can we nourish that? How can we maintain uh, balance? Where, where are you? you know, when, I'll talk more about that, that's the next slide. But these are all, you know, uh, you know the body, like uh, gratitude to, to food, to water. Water is a spirit, food is a spirit. It comes from the earth, it's a living thing. It's, a, it's an organism, it has energy. You know, that uh, physis, uh, physicist, um, uh, Julius Meyer, he um, surmised that, well, he discovered that um, energy can't be created or destroyed. So he says, when our bodies go to the earth, our energy goes back to the universe. And that's something that Indian people always believed. You know, and this, he, he came up with this in the late 1800s, but we believe this, you know, since the indigenous people were here. So that's a long time belief that we've had. <clears throat> so here's the worksheet that I created. And I know a lot of you, you know, have seen this. Um, I presented it at the toolkit, but if you look uh, in the upper right-hand corner, you know, a community. So I, I, I found, uh, I took phrases or words to describe, you know, that. And so what I asked uh, my NAC relatives to do on those spokes to circle where they are, 10 being the, the best, you know, so if you feel like you're really good at showing and receiving affection, give yourself a 10. Um, sense of belonging to your community, your tribe, your work, that's so important. And you know, one of the responses to historical trauma is a feeling that you don't belong. And that's really a lonely feeling. Um, healthy, safe, and enjoying relationships, rewarding work, you know, spirit, do you pray, meditate, you know, do you show respect, do you give respect, um, you know, in, in the mind, are you, can you forgive easily, you know, so they'll, so I'll have them do it, and there's some questions I have on another sheet, you know, what occurred to you when you're doing this worksheet, you know, how, how, what's your difficult rating while doing this, was it, was it easy, or did you find that it was, was kind of hard to rate yourself, so I, I asked some various questions on, on the other sheet, but here's one that was completed. And um, one of the gals in the group, she connected her dots. And I thought, wow, what a good idea, because it kind of shows if you were to put this medicine wheel on a car, 
I mean, you know, you'd sound like, you know, this would be, you'd have two flat tires, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, so my philosophy is if you don't know what you don't know, how do you change? So this worksheet is really a, a tool to assess people, their awareness, giving them awareness of where they are and the things that they, they have to work on in their life in order to maintain and um, a balance within the medicine wheel. Um, so I like this one because it just kind of um, solidifies what I'm talking about. Um, I, there's a, well, there's a lot of research about this and this is nothing new. I know you guys know about this stuff, but um, you know, placebo is Latin for uh, I shall please. Um, and it showed up uh, in the medical lingo ages ago to indicate inert treatments. So um, traditionally given to neurotic patients to placate them. So in the late 1900s, the AMA, the American Medical Association published a similar article by Dr. Henry Beecher called uh, The Powerful, Powerful Placebo, which made uh, the case that, um, when, uh, you know, with, the, with giving people drugs, if they are told that they will get better and they're given a sugar pill, they will usually most of the times get better. And then the SIBO effect is the opposite. So if somebody is um, being treated for cancer and they come in for, tr for, for treatment, for chemo, and they're told that all their hair is gonna fall out, well, guess what? And the, their hair will fall out. But there was a study that, that Dr. Bernie Siegel did, and there was a controlled study. So there's three groups. One was giving um, the medicine and told um, that their hair would fall out and that they're gonna get really sick. And then they measured, and it was it was uh, high. And then the other ones were weren't told anything, and so they they, they didn't have the same outcomes. Their they, their hair didn't fall out, and um, the other ones were given a sugar pill um, and were told that their hair was going to fall out. So it was really amazing how the mind, you know, we you know our minds are there's no Ill illness of the body apart from the mind. And it's, you know, I used, I used to tell my kids when they're little, I said, your, your, your mind is so powerful. I said, it has the power to make you ill. It has the power to make you well. You know, we, we um, definitely need our medical doctors to treat, treat um, illness, you know, that, that, uh, that uh, healing in this manner can't um, heal, you know, um, but it's really something um, when you, when you look at this and I think I, you know, this really blows me away and, you know, I've known about this for, uh, uh, for many years, but it's, um, it's kind of like, you know, I used to use reverse psychology with my kids, you know, and, you know, it worked for a while and then they got smart, but it's, you know, it's just kind of, you know, it's, uh, when patients are told they're experiencing pain, they experience pain, you know, it's, it's really quite phenomenal. And there's lots of studies on this. So psycho, psychonumerology, this is a relatively established new term that researches interactions between the central nervous system and the immune system. You know, the immune system reacts to stressful encounters, which corresponds messages to the central nervous system, the, the CNS, the cytokine system, the vagal innervation, and the lymphatic system. So the reason I, I included this is it's, it's when you think about the central nervous system and our immune system, all of these being so uh, uh, connected, you know, if, if we can uh, decrease um, by meditation, uh, what, what, how, how our interactions are going to affect us in a, in a relative matter, how different our immune system would be affected, right? So, if we're told that we're gonna experience pain with this medication or that life is really hard, oh, I never win. You know, if we have these thoughts that are ruminating, it's going to, it's going to have an impact on our central nervous system and, and, and our other systems. So I, I wanted to in, include this because I think it's really important, you know, because, um, you know, there's studies that say stressful events during childhood could increase the, the Sinus, uh, cytokines associated with increased risk of, um, of mental illness in adulthood. So there's something to this. Um, 
neuroplasticity. I love this term, AKA plus uh, brain plasticity. Uh, it, it's a means through which the brains change. And this is, you know, when I was growing up, I heard all these things about the, the cells in the brain. Oh, don't, you know, don't do drugs. Your brain, your brain cells will die and they can't regenerate. You know, don't do this. You know, don't be in the sun. Don't, you know, your brain cells are going to die and, you know, you're going to end up with no brain cells. But neuroplasticity is, uh, it, it's, it's a brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections throughout life. So I, I do this technique called brain spotting and it's, it's, uh, it uses the octal, um, ocular nerve. It bypasses the neocortex and it directly links to the limbic system. So it's, it's, it, it helps to develop new neural pathways within the brain. So one thing about neuroplasticity is it allows neurons, the nerve cells in the brain to compensate for injury and disease and to adjust these activities in response to new situations. Um, so there's a study, um, self-directed neuroplasticity, a gained improvement for general learning for personal and our professional development. So what a wonderful, um, it's just, you know, I don't wanna use the word hope, but it's like, there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel. There's, we're, so we're, we're doing it for a really good reason. And, you know, the things that I see happening at NAC are, are really wonderful. And I see people, um, their lives are impacted by the good that's happening. So, um, so Native American holistic health, um, culture is part of the soul. Um, I don't know if any of you have read Eduardo Duran he wrote um, Healing the Soul Wound. He actually came up with that term before historical trauma was, was um, coined. And healing the soul wound is, is part of, uh, you know, just what it says, you know, we're, you know we, um, we're spirits having a human experience. You know, we're energy beings. There, there's something uh, uh, greater than ourselves at work here. And when our bodies go back to the earth, our, our energy will go with our ancestors, with, with um, the energy of our, uh, those who have gone before us. So what he says is that, um, you know, that, that soul wound, not only is it part of the spiritual part, but it's also our, our, our body, our physical part. So, we have medicine people in our uh, tribe, you know, the Anishinaabe, um, that do uh, soul retrieval. So what happens when trauma uh, occurs that's too much for us to bear, part of the soul will stay at that space and time so that we can um, survive that trauma. And um, and then the trauma then too is stored in the body. And lucky for us to start in the subconscious or the limbic system, if it was stored in the neocortex, we'd be a mess, right? That we'd be triggered like all the time. So um, complementary and alternative medicine, uh, also known as CAM is, uh, you know, there's a lot of modalities that, that are really popular today. Oh my, you know, there's a long list of different um, CAM can modalities, but some of them are, you know, with the body. So it's the chiropractic massage yoga. Um, there's diets and herbs and aromatherapy, um, Reiki, Qigong, um, meditation, hypnosis, and, and then senses are art, dance, music, guided meditation, visualization. You know, there's, there's uh, uh, reflexology, there's, you know, um, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but there's, there's so many um, different uh, modalities out there that you know there's uh, naturopathy there's homeopathic medicine there's you know um, a lot of alternative things out there um, so what we do at NAC is uh, we offer mind body medicine there's training that uh, uh, all employees are able to go to and and it's it's um it's a little bit more than just meditation because it takes you on a journey for of healing it's you know there's things that you do like a uh, genealogy and, and, and you, you, you really get in depth to the healing. Um, I do somatic healing therapy, which is um, actually some, soma is body. 
So uh, going into the body to find where the trauma is stored. And I like to think of our bodies, you know, we're, 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 we're humans, we're spirits having a human experience, right? So if we, when you think of spirit as our plumbing, and when we have trauma, not only is it stored in the brain, but it's stored in the body, so that that trauma may get stuck in, in one of those pipes. And, and if it's not addressed, it will cause pain. You ever had people come into the clinic, they're like, I'm in pain, this hurts. And you do tests and there's tests and there's, well, we can't find anything wrong. You know, that's a clear sense that it's a soma related to trauma. So um, I do work with that, um, with, with the NAC relatives that come in. I'm also um, um, trained in brain spotting and I recently um, completed generational brain spotting or intergenerational brain spotting. Um, <clears throat> and that goes back uh, past generations. And so it's really interesting. Um, and brain spotting to me is, is a miracle for historical trauma and for healing. It's just, you know, like I said, it bypasses the uh, neocortex. And because trauma is stored in the subconscious, it's it, it, I, through the eye, I can locate where the trauma is stored in the brain. And once that happens through the activation promise process, that trauma is released. And depending on the amount of trauma, the amount of trauma, like it was, you know, a long endurance of the, of the same trauma, or if there's um, a lot of different episodes of trauma, you know, might take more than just one or two sessions. So I've had some miracles happen. I just, it is, um, and I think maybe if we have time, I'll share one. Um, but I also do spiritual energy healing work. And that's, that's kind of like the somatic, but it's more of moving. It's, it's, it's me doing the work rather than having the, our relative doing the work. So it's, it's, um, it's, it's just getting that energy, that spirit flowing through the body. We use sacred medicines, um, this sage, sweet grass, um, tobacco, and um, cedar. Uh, you know, at least I use at least one of those with our relatives when I see them. You know, we'll we'll hold our tobacco and ask the spirits to come in and help us, and then we'll smudge at the end just to cleanse anything that might be residual. And uh, you know, cedar is is a is a wonderful uh, uh, medicine. Well, they all are. You know, but they all have different purposes. The creator gave those to us for, for different reasons. Um, and we work collaboratively um, with departments across the clinic, medical, behavioral health, chemical health, and harm reduction. So I work uh, with the medically um, assisted treatment program, MAT, and then I work with medical and behavioral health. So... So here's some resources. You know, there's uh, the American Holistic Health Association, the American Holistic Nurses Association, the American Medical Association Integrated Physicians Practice Section, the Minnesota Holistic Nurse Association and Friends, the you know, Minnesota Holistic Medical Group, and the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine for Health. So that's it. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Make with Renee, could you turn off your um, show so we can see? There we go. Any questions? Um, Maylin, did, oh, Maylin, do you have a question or were you just enjoying? <laughs> just clapping. <laughs> well, I'd like just to share that that um, uh, a, a case, I guess. Um, you know, I had a I had a, a, a Native American female. Uh, um, she's a mother of of four, and she, her kids were uh, in our MAT program. And she came in, and she's really just this uh, disheveled. She wasn't wearing any makeup and she had bags on her eyes and she just really looked like she's been was through the ringer you know so and I knew I knew her from uh the community and so we sat and we talked and I said well you know would you like to try brain spotting and she said sure you know she told me that she would go and pray by the river and it was just you know this just flood of tears and so when I you know I have a pointer that I use 
and um, I put a little thing on it, but it's actually one of those. So I, I, I asked her to think of the issue. What is it that's, that's, that's on your mind? And so she, she says, I feel like I'm a bad mother. She goes, my kids are on drugs and I, I feel like it's my fault. And so she easily got activated. And so I started to move the pointer and I found her blind spot right away. So the eye does something when I find that spot. So when I'm moving it, she, you know, there's her eyes blinked and she kind of twitched. And I, so I, I said, I, you know, does this feel more intense? And she says, yes. Yeah. So I put the, the, the spot there. And one of the things about brain spot practitioners is that we don't talk during the thing that well, we reassure and things like that, but we feel, you know, there's the, the, the comet and we're kind of the tail of the comet. So they're taking us on a journey of their healing. So she, um, I said, you can share with me what's coming up, if there's images, if, if there's thoughts or anything. And so she's talking about her kids and, and then we checked in, in her body and we kind of, you know, um, I said, well, okay, let's acknowledge that and then we'll, we'll move on. And so we went to the brain spot, she got activated again. And then, and then something came up, I think like the third time that we went back to the brain spot, she goes, I feel bad for not taking care of my sister when she was sick. And then when she, her, when she deactivated, we went back into the body. She goes, oh, it's, it moved. She goes, the pain is not, it's not in, you know, the same place. It's like, so I said, okay, let's keep going. So we did one more and then I got her down to a zero and we went, we, 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 we acknowledged the body again. She goes, I, I'm not feeling any pain. I said, oh my gosh, you're wonderful. But uh, I ran into her a few days later, she was in the clinic and she happened to be with one of her daughters and she's in the, our little waiting room in the back and she's sitting there and she had makeup on and her hair was done and she was smiling. Oh my gosh. And I looked at her, I said, I said, how are you? And she goes, I'm great. She goes, oh my God, yeah. I don't know what you did. And she said, you know what? She, I realized, she goes, I never knew that I blame myself for not taking care of my sister, you know, because her sister ended up passing away. She goes, I had no idea that was there. And so by releasing that, it, it, she had that transition, right? That there was something that happened there. And it's really incredible because before I do this, we say, I say a prayer in Ojibwe and I ask the spirits to help us. I call on her spirit helpers and mine and there's a shift that happens and I can feel it. It's like, uh, it's like, you know, it's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's indescribable, but I feel, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a conduit. I'm, I'm like the wire that plugs the, the lamp into the wall. You know, the, the spirit works through me, you know, her spirits and, and mine to, for healing because nothing happens by coincidence. When people come to see me, I says, well, you're here for a reason. The, the, the spirits brought us together. It's not, you know, it's uh, nothing happens by coincidence. I really believe that things happen for a reason. So that's one of my favorite stories, but I have so many, um, uh, you know, success stories and, and, you know, it's, 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 um, there's more healing that has to be done. And I think a lot of people feel that they don't deserve or they're not ready. You know, there's kind of this, um, you know, and it's, it's, they, yeah, I, and I don't know what else to say about that. It's kind of, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but unless they're ready to change and they're ready to do the work, because healing is no joke. You know, it's, it's, it takes vulnerability. It takes, you know, looking at things in a different way, and it takes letting go of that barrier. Some of us have such a barrier put up that we're afraid to, uh, to let that go, because how do we act without it? So, with that, um, I'll stop. Um, and thank you so much for listening and letting me talk about this stuff. I you know I spent like two days making notes and I didn't even use them. It's like, oh my gosh, I don't know why I do that. But anyway, me, Gwich, Gigawab, I'm in. And I'm in. I, I really enjoyed those stories, um, Renee. So thank, thank you for telling, telling us about that. Um, I was wondering if anybody had a question. I don't really have a question, but um, I am Renee's daughter, 
and she did use reverse psychology on me and she <laughs> told me things that um that would happen to me if I didn't stop doing that <laughs> so um I made it out okay now I figured it out but um I really enjoy listening to you talk and um sharing um you know what you've learned and and how we use that at NAC and um yeah we we are all here to help each other heal and um thank you very much Michi Miigwech for everything you've shared with us today I appreciate it I'll, I'll pay you later we're <laughs> <laughs> very lucky to have both of you <laughs> I'm kidding. Yes, Michelle? I found this hand raise function and now I don't know how to make it go away. <laughs> I can make it go away. Thank you. Um, so I think it, I, I love talking about this stuff and I think a lot of us know that this stuff works. Um, I hear things from patients um, and I've also had kind of some, some thoughts myself about so some, some modalities, um, you know, like, like yoga and acupuncture, those are traditional medicines, um, but also can be religious practices. How can you practice those things, but still be, res but be respectful? Um, and then it does brain spotting, is that a, a, a traditional medicine um, or is it something newer? Yeah. Wow, that is such a great question. I personally um, have a slight problem with yoga because I feel like yogis, um, that's their whole life. I mean, they, they, the yogis practice, do these practices 24 seven. And, you know, when some, some, some people appropriate these things and bring them back, especially to make profit. You know, some of these yoga classes are not cheap. It, it's it's a, it's, a, it's misappropriating um, other uh, someone's culture. So um, thank you for asking asking that question. Um, uh, brain spotting was developed by uh, Dr. Grand, and he's a, a PhD, he's a therapist, and he was he he was trained in EMDR, where you it's like that bio, bilateral, you know, the eyes, and he, he was doing a figure skater who kept falling down. She's a professional figure skater and she, could, she couldn't figure out why. And um, so she came in, she's having marital problems or something and her and her husband were fighting, but her, something, her eye did something and when he was doing EMDR on her and it told him to stop. So he listened to his intuition. And by doing that, he was able to, with the ocular nerve, find where the trauma was stored. And, and that was it, she stopped falling down. So he, he was onto something. So he's been, you know, um, really developing this brain spotting and it's catching on. Um, I went to the conference not too long ago and, you know, there was like 1200 people there. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing how many people are, are doing this and having great success with it. So did I answer all your questions, all your questions? Okay. Yeah, you did. Thank you. Uh -huh. It looks like we have one other question from Valerie Gustafson. What is the best way to refer people for the somatic modalities? Is there someone people can call and talk to and get more information? Um, well, I'm available, you know, with the clinic. Um, it's, you know, NAC, we don't turn anybody away, right, Dr. Robbie? We, they, they register, we have a sliding fee scale. Um, you don't... You know, you anyone could come and see me. I'll see. I'll see anyone. I'll, you know, I grab people off the street. You no, know. but um, yeah, it's uh, calling. Call the clinic. I know there's some. You know, somatic experience practitioners out there. There, you know, if you go Google it, you'll you'll find some places. Uh, you know, throughout the state. Um, I was seeing a gal in St. Paul. She has a place called the Healing House. She was she was my somatic practitioner. So there's um yeah. There's quite a few places out there. And then, um, Renee, if they were to make, want to make an appointment, would they call Behavioral Health or would they call? Yes, Behavioral Health. What's the number there? Um, that's a really good question. I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think if they call the general number and then they can click a number to get to Behavioral Health, you know, they have to do the radio buttons, whatever. Yeah, so. 
8086 is our gen 612, area code 612 is our general number. Aaron Dixon, oh. thank you, Aaron, for uh, putting that in the, oh, and Genevieve. I figured our BH people oh, were hearing. Oh, there they are. 843 area code 612. Thank you so much. Me, Gwetch. Can I ask one last quick question? I just thought of this. Is there any, you know, kind of thing that we could use or people could use to tell like, hey, this isn't legit, you know, because I know it, this cam is, is kind of, it's popular, right? And so, yes, there are a lot of yoga studios. There are a lot of people who, you know, state they're offering these services. Is there any thing that really is a big red flag for you that you're like, mm, yeah, I would stay away from that clinic or that practitioner? Yeah, I would, you know, if, if, um, you know, if you're hesitant or, or, or something doesn't seem right, you know, and listening to your intuition is a really good thing, but ask, asking them, where, where did you get your training? You know, what are you licensed or what's your certificate, things like that. And, you know, they'll be able to tell you right, right off the bat, you know, but if it sounds like they're kind of like stammering, then, you know, I would probably, you know, hang up and go somewhere else. Yeah. But it's, and, you know, it's really, you know, the old saying was, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. It's, uh, I'll, I'll see it when I believe it. You know, it, once, you know, I always tell the story to my black business, this, I'll, I'll stop after this. But having, having faith, you know, offering your tobacco is a lot like going to a restaurant and ordering food. You know, you don't follow the waitress into the kitchen, making sure she'll scramble the right egg. You know, you trust that she's going to bring your food the way you ordered it. That's the same when we pray. That's the same when we heal. If we believe, you know, it's gonna it's gonna work. Really, that's that placebo effect, right? I see Genevieve. <laughs> and I'd also throw in there a uh, again asking, yeah, who trained you and your credentials is important. Like, you know, I'm new to the twins. Yep. But also, I just want to emphasize, you know, I think uh, we have medicines here and smudges and, and they're things that we've been told we can show people and stuff, but a lot of ceremonies we can't share, um, but we can respectfully tell you about them. And even some of the ones we can share, like sometimes a sweat lodge and such, if you find a native ceremony and uh, somebody is charging money for it, that's a no go in my teachings. Yeah, mine too. Um, yeah, because we can't. I mean, there's sometimes there's a per diem given or gifts given. But when I first started doing uh, spiritual work, the first thing I was taught, you know, is if you run a ceremony, Sundance, sweat, whatever, shaking tent, you can't charge for it. Mm -hmm. And so that is a, I know it's, but I'm just speaking in my, the native yeah. culture, you know. And, and you know where it's it's about gift giving. You know when when somebody does something for us, we generously repay them. You know back in the day, it would be blankets or hides or things like that, and and um, beadwork. You know, but not today. Not everybody has time to do beadwork or know how to sew quilt. So you can gift them with monetary things. But Sean's right. If somebody says, "Well, it's three hundred dollars per person to come," then uh, -uh. that's not why they should be doing it. Yeah. There's yeah. a guy in Seattle for $2,000. He'll guarantee you a vision quest. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> I, I was going to pay him because, you know, oh. I wanted, I wanted more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, Renee, that was, that was very helpful. And um, I think we all learned. Um, thank you. Thank you. Miigwech. And uh, we'll see you all next time. What's the date, Tina? December? December 1st. That is World AIDS Day. Yep. And Dr. Stately is going to be presenting. So. Miigwech. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.